the Apopo port now operating 24-hour operations according to the order given by the acting president. That's the key question now. If you have any answer, let us know. Uh, okay, executive order number one, and we're still on that, that the Registrar General of the CAC, that's the Corporate Affairs Commission, shall within 14 days of the issuance of the order on the May the 18th ensure that all registration process are the uh, CAC are fully automated through their website from start to completion. 14 days since May the 18th, that took you to the first week of uh, June, and we're going to find out whether that has been implemented as we're wrapping up the first six months of the year. Executive order number three, this was what the acting president signed on, that all agencies of the government on or before the end of July, that's the end of next month, every year, starting from this year, your costs to be prepared and submitted to Finance Minister and the Minister of Budgets and National Planning, their annual budget estimates. That's what the uh, acting president says. So we're going to find out in the next 30 days if all government agencies would have submitted their annual budget estimates for 2018 to the Finance Minister and the National Planning and Budgets. That's Udo Doma and Kemi Adioshu, respectively. Meantime, uh, the acting president, uh, Professor Shibaja, also signs two new laws to ease credit to medium and small enterprises, and that's part of the conversations at 10.30. Uh, the Collateral Registry Act, which now allows MSMEs to use not just landed property, but equipment and other inventories as collateral to obtain loans from creditors, including commercial banks. Uh, microfinance and anyone else who's doing credit and the second uh, law was the credit reporting act in other words all credit bureau agencies should harmonize their uh, data on the credits profile of every Nigerian who's doing business or looking or doing credit looking for loans and to overwrite the previous regulations of the central bank and this new law or two laws was to ease MSME's access to credit. And a very jumbo team, 43 Nigerians uh, were inaugurated as uh, members of the Nigerian Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council. That was inaugurated by the acting president, and he's also the chairman of that uh, uh, council. So will these Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council bring the much industrialization progress to Nigeria. We're discussing the future of Nigeria's economy and we're kicking that off with a half-year report looking at the medium and small enterprises. Let's squeeze in the markets. A very interesting first half of 2017. The Central Bank leaves the headline interest rate on change at the first and second meetings in the year, the MPC, that's what we call it. Inflation also started trimming. We're now around 17.2. First quarter earnings was a healthy surprise, in particular for the banks under the yoke of non-performing loans, despite the worries from within and outside. The stock market had a record rally so far in 2017. On Friday, before the public holiday, we were 19.75% index return year to date. That's a very decent one, despite those bloodletting on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday last week as investors and traders balanced their books uh, for the quarter and for the first half. Meantime, Naira has also been recovering rapidly. We started the year 520 on January the 1st. Naira dollar exchange rate went out around 350. The Naira has clawed back nearly 200 basis points against the greenback in the period. And if you look at the new INE window, that's the investors and exporters window, the central bank has been popping uh, about $7 billion into the market since the new year started. Look at the fixed income. The yields were a few notches above inflation. Uh, inflation, 17.24. We're seeing treasuries and uh, FGN papers around 18, 19, 19.5% 19 at the second market. So that gives you a bit of a decent uh, yield if you are sentimentally positive on fixed income, treasuries, and uh, bonds. One good news, we escaped uh, reclassification or being kicked out of the MSCI Frontier Markets Index. The MSCI stands for Morgan Stanley Capital International. That's the 
uh, an arm of the Morgan Stanley Investment Bank in the U.S. that has, uh, uh, what's it called, a list of indexes for uh, major, different markets around the world, for developed emerging markets and frontier markets as well. But let's get into doing business. 20, uh, uh, doing business in the recession. Let's just have a few uh, of that. Business executives are still recounting how their businesses weathered the headwinds of economic recession that started in 2015. One of the few uh, companies that have some sweet stories to tell is Okumu Oil Palm PLC. This is the chief executive, Dr. Graham Hefer. Take a listen. I suppose uh, coming from the agricultural field, we are probably, uh, I don't want to say on the opposite end, um, but uh, yes, in the last two years, uh, we're most of the countries, companies have had a significant decline in their revenues and have had a very difficult time. Uh, we fortunately seem to be uh, having the cream, if I can call it that. Now that's uh, probably because, as my friend has said, uh, we, we, we are fairly buffered, and I'm talking basically now in terms of my company, Akuma Oil Farm, we are fairly buffered uh, by the fact that we do everything locally. So our import substitution is, is not of major concern. Uh, where we did have issues with having to import and the lack of forex, uh, what we did was we aggressively went out and looked to see if there were any local substitutions. And to a large degree, we have found companies, surprisingly, that uh, we should have found before, if I can say that, but maybe it was just easier getting the forex. So we have changed our, our attitude in that regard. We have also very aggressively uh, lowered our costs, made sure that everything that we do, uh, we do with a cost-cutting uh, background in, in our context there. We also jealously guard any forex that we do get uh, we not only do uh, oil palm, but we also do rubber. And that has also buffered us against the, the problems that we see currently in the market because we export all of our rubber. It currently gives us a fairly good uh, income uh, so that if we do require any forex, we do have it available to us. Whilst the oil palm is locally sold into the market, Again, we are very, very uh, grateful to have the fact that uh, demand is above what we can produce at the moment, so we can get rid of all of our product locally, uh, and that has helped us. Although we have seen uh, resistance at the consumer level to price increases, so we've had to take a little bit of those costs back into our books and to make sure that uh, if, if we want you to, to, to keep going forward, that we work together with consumers, as we heard earlier, who were under extreme pressure. In terms of our productivities, we have also gone very, very hard into that, made sure that where we can increase our productivity, we have done so. We've also looked at uh, vertical integration within our, within our company, meaning that uh, we're looking at better yielding crops so that we do not have to look expressively for more land because whilst everyone says there's a lot of land available I can promise you put a put a shovel into the ground and see how many pairs of eyes come looking back at you about asking you what land you're doing or what you're doing with that land and I can tell you the 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 way is is not to expand horizontally but to concentrate more on vertical expansion so these are a few of the areas that we have concentrated on um, we all, I'm sure everybody will say, okay, but you also have the, uh, the list of 41 items that your product is on. Uh, an interesting, uh, um, interesting item that I picked up was that uh, in 2016, uh, oh, sorry, 2017 first quarter, uh, from the Malaysia Palm Oil Board, uh, there was around 90,000 tons of CPO that was imported into Nigeria. Uh, compared to the same period in 2016 where only 12,000 tons went in. So if anyone can give me an answer as to why that happened, uh, I'd be very happy to know. Uh, I'm sure we can debate that a lot, a lot but just as a, a, an interesting one is that 
Uh, if you took all the oil that came through Cotton Newport into Nigeria uh, from Benin Republic, uh, if you worked it back,